I'm Amanda Edwards and I'm one of the at-large city council members here in Houston. I'm currently out in the field in a, the Lakewood area of town canvassing an area that we had already visited right after Hurricane Harvey struck us. We've been out in the Lakewood community today canvassing the area to make sure that we are addressing the needs post Harvey. I brought with me a number of volunteers from various areas across Houston to help me in making sure that we were connecting our communities with the resources they need. Uh, my name is Erfan Ali. I'm a member of ISERF, which is part of the Ismaili Muslim community of Houston area. I'm Allison Hay, and I'm the executive director for Houston Habitat for Humanity. Yeah, my name is Juan Sorto, and I'm actually a member of the communities. This is a packet of information that we have been distributing to our households and we call it our Harvey Relief Packet. And the goal of passing out this packet is to make sure people have access to resources, important numbers, so I'm gonna walk you through that. The second objective here is to make sure that we are getting people connected to the volunteer or uh, nonprofit uh, who can help them with getting their house repaired and restored. And then the last piece of this is that we, we are also going to be distributing supplies. And so we have the Department of Neighborhoods with us with Rashad. He has some supplies in his truck. So we will be making sure that we distribute supplies if they need them. We are walking up to one of the houses that we visited earlier um, several weeks ago and checking on them and seeing if they've gotten assistance. They were one of the houses we couldn't reach with follow-up. A lot of these residents have uh, called other people in their family, uh, neighbors for help, but they're still very much in dire need. And so we've come back today to make sure that some of the households that we weren't able to connect to volunteer resources got connected to those volunteer resources. But in addition to that, making sure that everybody had access to important critical information about how to recover after Harvey, for example, where you might be able to get free furniture, where do you go if you still have FEMA claims that are unresolved that you need assistance with, or other case management needs. We also have information about uh, a litany of resources available um, uh, that might be helpful to families. We also connected people to um, some supplies that we had access to through the Bread of Life. And so we dropped off resources and supplies and finally made sure that we are able to tell their stories. We were flooded out here and we couldn't get out of the house. How much water? Oh, uh, about four feet or uh, more in the house. And, uh, but we, my children had been calling for three days for somebody to come and rescue us out of, out of this house. No one would come. The trucks would come, and, but the boats would come and pass, but no one would stop. So my boy got that window, let that window up. We was up there in that room. And he says, stop, come get my mama. And he said, we'll be back. He said, no, don't come back, come now. He said, I need you to get her now. Say, don't worry about me, just get my mom out of here. Okay, so tell me a little bit now about what's happened. I mean, I'm really sorry that all, I mean, that is a very traumatic experience. Tell us, have you gotten your FEMA claims resolved? Tell us, what assistance? Do you have things in your home that still need repair? Yes, I do. My whole house need repair. All, all downstairs was destroyed. Everything was Everything touched. Did was you have touched. to remove all of your furniture? Yes, I did. I, I, I had, they put all of it out here on the street. Where that brown spot? Yeah, where brown, that brown spot. We put some there and then we put some on this side over here. Okay. So, uh, I, I, I lost it. So one of the things that is deeply troubling is that we have not necessarily told the stories of what our residents are going through. So I want to thank you for telling your story from you being rescued out of your house through boats and, and, and the like to now being here without furniture, um, having to fend for yourself in terms of getting your son to help with home repair and the like. And, and one of the things that was important for people to understand is that your needs are urgent now. Right, right. And that there is still need. Just because really? we picked up the garbage really? doesn't mean that the need has gone really? away. If they don't see the stuff on the street, they think everything is taken care of. But you can go in some of these houses, these houses are not fixed, not in this subdivision. I don't know what's going on otherwhere. But right here, these people are not 
getting what they need. It's a lot of make back home. Yeah. Here in Houston, we do have a we do have an attitude and a spirit of uh, do it ourselves, and sometimes we don't open our mouths when we need the help that we need. Uh, but it doesn't mean that those needs do not exist. Briefly tell us what happened uh, after Hurricane Harvey floodwaters came into your home. Basically, as the water was coming in, we really didn't know how high it was going to get. And we've been through Allison. We flooded through Allison. Putting what we could save up high so it wouldn't get wet or damaged. Um, I have a seeing eye dog, and my concern was him. My family was with me. My mother stays next door, but we were all together. So tell us, what kind of needs do you have today? Did you have... Uh, all of uh, have all of your concerns and needs been addressed or are there still remaining needs? I don't think I received enough FEMA aid. Uh, if it hadn't been for the organizations that are around, I would not have been able to make a full recovery. Anything you want people to know about the struggle that you're experiencing now? Do you feel forgotten? Do you feel alone? Tell us a little bit about that. I feel a bit alone because when people in Washington say the need has been met, we've come a long way. We've provided X amount of billions of dollars to FEMA aid. They need to come to the neighborhood and see what still needs to be done. Like neighborhoods like mine, neighborhoods like my friends, my family, they need to come here personally and see the real need. I'm here with some community leaders on the northeast side of town who have been very active and I want to just get their summary, their view of what's needed five months after Hurricane Harvey struck this area. A few of the residents have done some of the work, I said some of the work, mm -hmm. but their needs are yet to be met, to be made whole again. And what we're asking for those entities that are out there saying, I'm going to help you, let's coordinate, let's get together, let's help the residents of Houston, Texas that have been affected by Harvey. And I think one of the things that's important to note is while we are still working very vigilantly here on the ground to make sure that resident needs are being met, we cannot do it alone. We have to have the cooperation of our state, our county, our city, and our federal government, and we have to have the appropriate funding to make sure that we're able to support a better Houston than what we had before.